from around the globe. It's the Cube, presenting Future Cloud, one event, a world of opportunities. Brought to you by Cisco. Okay, we're here with Thomas Shiva, who's the Vice President of Product Management, AKA VP of all things data center, networking, SDN, cloud, you name it, in that category. Welcome, Thomas, good to see you again. Hey, Sim, yes, thanks for having me on. <laughs> yeah, it's our pleasure. Okay, let's get right into observability. When you think about observability, visibility, infrastructure, monitoring, problem resolution across the network, how does cloud change things? In other words, what are the challenges that networking teams are currently facing as they're moving to the cloud and trying to implement hybrid cloud? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, visibility as always is very, very important. And it's quite frankly, it's not just, it's not just the networking team, it's actually the application team too, right? And as you pointed out, the, the underlying impetus to what's going on here is the, the data center is wherever the data is. And I think we said this a couple of years back and really what happens, the, the applications are going to be deployed uh, in different locations, right? Whether it's in a public cloud, whether it's on-prem, uh, and they're built differently, right? They're built as microservices. So they might actually be distributed as well at the same application. And so what that really means is you need as an operator, as well as actually a user, a better visibility, where are my pieces? And you need to be able to correlate uh, between where the app is and what the underlying network is that has some place in these different locations. So you have actually a good knowledge why the app is running so fantastic or sometimes not. So I think that's that's really the problem statement. Uh, what what we're trying to go after was observability. Okay, and let's let's double click on that. So so a lot of customers tell me that you got to stare at log files until your eyes bleed, and then you got to bring in guys <laughs> with lab coats who have PhDs to figure all this stuff yeah. out. So so you just described it's getting more complex, but at the same time you have to simplify things. So how how are you doing that? Correct. So what we basically have done is we have this fantastic product uh, that, that is called Thousand Eyes. And so what this does is basically has the name, which I think is a fantastic, uh, fantastic name. You have these sensors everywhere um, and you can have uh, a good correlation on uh, links between if I run uh, from a site to a site, from a site to a cloud, from a cloud to a cloud. And you basically can measure what is the performance of these links. And so what we're, what we're doing here is we're actually extending the footprint of these thousand eyes agent, right? Instead of just having them uh, in virtual machine and clouds, we are now embedding them with the Cisco network devices, right? We announced this with the uh, Catalyst uh, 9000, and we're extending this now to our um, 8000 Catalyst product line for the, for the SD-WAN products, as well as to the data center products, the Nexus line. Um, and so what you see is, as you know, half are saying, you have thousand eyes, you get a million insights and you get a billion dollar of improvements uh, for how your applications run. And this is really um, the, the power of tying together the uh, footprint of where the network is with the visibility, what is going on. So you actually know the application behavior that uh, is attached to this network. I see, so okay, so as the cloud evolves, it expands, it connects, you're actually enabling thousand eyes to go further, not just confined within a single data center location, but out to the yes. network, across clouds, et cetera. Correct, wherever the network is, you're going to have a thousand eyes sensor, and you can bring this together, and you can quite frankly pick. If you want to say, hey, I have my application in public cloud provider A, uh, domain one, and I have another one, domain two, I can do monitor that link. I can also monitor, I have a user that has a campus location or a branch location. I kind of put an agent there and then I can monitor the connectivity from that branch location all the way to the, let's say corporations uh, data center or headquarter or to the cloud. And I can have these probes and just really have visibility and saying, hey, if there's a performance, I know where the issue is. And then I obviously can use all the other tools that we have to address those. All right, let's talk about the cloud operating model. Everybody tells us that you know it's it's really the change in the model that drives big numbers in terms of ROI. And, and I want you to maybe address how you're bringing automation and DevOps to this world of, of hybrid, and specifically, how is Cisco enabling IT organizations to move to a cloud operating model as that cloud definition expands? Yeah, no, that's that's another interesting topic beyond the observability. So really, really what we're seeing, and this is going on for, uh, I want to say a couple of years now, it's really this transition from uh, operating infrastructure as a networking team, more like a, a service, like what you would expect from a cloud provider, right? It's really around the networking team 
offering services like a cloud provider does. And that's really what the meaning is of cloud operating model, right? Whether this is infrastructure running in your own data center, whether that's linking that infrastructure with whatever runs on the public cloud, is operating it like a cloud service. And so we are on this journey for a while. So one of the examples um, that we have, we're moving some of the control uh, software assets that customers today can deploy on-prem uh, to uh, uh, an instance that they can deploy in a, in a cloud provider and just basically instantiate things there and then just run it that way, right? And so the latest example for this is what we have our uh, identity service engine that is now unlimited availability available on AWS and will become available mid this year, both on AWS and Azure as a service. You can just go to Marketplace, you can load it there, and now you basically can uh, start running your policy control in the cloud, managing your access infrastructure in your data center, in your campus, uh, wherever you want to do it. And so that's just one example of how we see uh, our customers' network operations team taking advantage of a cloud operating model and basically deploying their, their tools where they need them and when they need them. So uh, what's the scope of, uh, I hope I'm saying it right, ICE, right? ISE, I think it's, yeah. I call it ICE. <laughs> what's the scope of that? Like for instance, can it affect my, or even, you know, address, simplify my security approach. Absolutely, that's now coming to what is the beauty of the product itself. Yes, uh, what you can do is really, is like there's a lot of people talking about else, how do I get to a zero trust approach to networking? How do I get to a much more dynamic, flexible segmentation in my infrastructure? Again, whether this is on the campus access, whether it's in data center, and ICE helps you there. You can use this as a point to define your policies and then interconnect from there, right? In this particular case, if you would instant ICE in, in the cloud as a software uh, load, you now can connect and say, hey, I want to manage and program my network infrastructure in my data center or on my campus, going to the respective controller, whether it's DNA center for campus or whether it's the uh, ACI policy controller. And so, yes, what you get as an effect out of this is a very elegant way to automatically manage in one place, what is my policy? and then drive the right segmentation in your network infrastructure. Yeah, zero trust, it was pre-pandemic, it was kind of a buzzword, now it's become a mandate. I, I, I wonder if we could talk yes. about, yeah, right? I mean, so, I, I wonder <laughs> if we could much. talk about cloud native apps. Uh, you got all these yeah. developers that are working inside organizations, they're maintaining legacy apps, they're connecting their data to, to systems in the cloud, they're sharing that data. And these, these developers, they're rapidly advancing their skill sets. How is Cisco enabling its infrastructure to support this world of cloud native, making infrastructure more responsive and agile for application developers? Yeah, so you, you, we're going to the top. We started with visibility. We talked about the operating model, how, how our network operators actually want to use tools going forward. Now, the next step to this is, it's not just the operator. How do they actually, where do they want to put these tools? How do they, how do they interact with these tools? as well as quite frankly, is how let's say a DevOps team or an application team or a cloud team also wants to take advantage of the programmability of the underlying network. And this is where we're moving into this whole cloud native discussion, right? Which has really two angles. There is the, the cloud native way how applications are being built. And then there is the cloud native way how you interact with infrastructure, right? Uh, and so what we have done is we're A, putting in place the, the on-ramps between clouds. Uh, and then on top of it, we're exposing for all these tools, APIs that can be used and leveraged by standard uh, cloud tools or uh, uh, cloud native tools, right? And one example or two examples we always have, and again, we're on this journey for a while, is uh, both Ansible uh, script capabilities uh, that exist from Red Hat as well as uh, Hashi Terraform capabilities that you can orchestrate across infrastructure to drive infrastructure automation. And what, what really stands behind it is what either the networking operations team wants to do or even the uh, app team, they want to be able to describe the application as a code and then drive automatically or programmatically instantiation of infrastructure needed for that application. And so what you see us doing is providing all these uh, capability as an interface for all our networking tools, right? Whether this is ICE, what I just mentioned, whether this is our uh, DCN controllers in, in the data center, uh, whether these are the controllers in the, uh, in the campus, for all of those, we have cloud native interfaces. So an uh, operator or a DevOps team can actually interact directly with that infrastructure 
the way they would do today was everything that lives on the cloud or was everything how they built the application. Yeah, this is key. You can't even have the conversation of, of op cloud operating model that includes and comprises on-prem without programmable infrastructure. So that's, yeah. that's very important. Last question, Thomas. Are customers actually using this? You made the announcement today. Are there, are there any examples of customers out there doing this? We, we do have a lot of customers out there um, that are moving down the path and using the, the, the Cisco high performance infrastructure, both on the compute side as well as on the Nexus side. Uh, one of the customers, uh, and this is like an interesting case, is Rakuten. Uh, Rakuten is a large telco provider, um, a mobile 5G operator uh, in Japan and expanding and is in different countries. Uh, and so people are saying, oh, cloud, you must be talking about the public cloud provider, the big, the big three or four. Uh, but if you look at it, it's a lot of the telco service providers are actually cloud providers as well and expanding very, very rapidly. And so we're actually very um, proud to work together with, with Rakuten and help them building a high performance uh, data center infrastructure based on 100 gig and actually 400 gig. Uh, to drive their deployment to it's a 5G mobile cloud infrastructure, which is which is uh, where the whole the whole world of traffic is going. And so it's really exciting to see this development and see the power of automation visibility uh, together with the high performance infrastructure becoming reality and delivering actually uh, services. Yeah, some great points you're making there. I mean, yes, you have the big four clouds that are enormous, but then you have a lot of actually quite large clouds, telcos that are either proximate to those clouds or they're in places where those hyperscalers may not have a presence and building out their, their own infrastructure. So, so that's a great case study. Uh, Thomas, hey, great having you on. Thanks so much for spending some time with us. Yeah, same here, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right, and thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE, the leader in tech event coverage.